<laughs> but but on, on the policy, uh, an exclusive report from Sky News has revealed that Labor has launched a special campaigning fund to fuel anti-nuclear fake news. They're begging members for cash to finance it. Now, I, I hope it's going to be a bit better than some of those pathetic memes that Labor MPs were putting out on social media during the week. But in a newsletter briefing emailed to Labor's members, ALP National Secretary Paul Erickson called the coalition's nuclear policy a scam. And I think they are worried about this, Evelyn, because we do have a proposal. Now, sure, we don't have the numbers yet. They will come. But there is a proposal now on the table for the first mm. time in a very long time to do something different mm. with the energy mix in this country. Uh, and the only way that Labor can possibly hope to fight this is on the economics. They, they can't win the argument of, about safety anymore, even though you saw some of the, um, the Premiers try to <laughs> play along those lines, yeah. Jacinta Allen and, and whatever this week. <laughs> But it was really interesting to see Peter Malinowskis, the South Australian Premier, who in my heart of hearts, I believe, supports nuclear energy, but he's had the talking to from Mr Albanese. He was much more mild in his criticism that, oh, you know, the, the economics doesn't stack up. It's literally the only argument they've got against the thing, right? Mm. Look, I think fear-mongering is a very powerful thing, and I think we've seen the fruits of what fear-mongering can do the last few years, and so I think Labor are going to perhaps lean on that a little bit, and the way that they're doing that is through this economic thing, because right now we are in such an economic crisis, a cost-of-living crisis, so if you say to somebody it's going to be hard for money or it's going to be harder on you, people are going to panic because right now we don't even know if we're going to be able to afford our winter electricity bill. So they will use fear-mongering to try and discredit the other proposal. That's a tactic. All politicians on both sides do it. Um, you know, it's they're all birds of the same feather, unfortunately, when it comes to that. But, you know, I've got to be honest, I think that Liberal aren't going far enough with their proposition. They're, I think, was it 2050? that they said we will well, have nuclear renewable... They reckon we can have one renewal. online by 2035 as uh, I don't... The, the small modular reactors. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but, I, but I think that people would be a lot more comforted at home if they thought that it was going to happen a lot quicker than 2050, The, the only honest. problem is that it does take a long time mm. to build. But well, I they suppose... did it over in China in less than 10 well, years. Well, they can do anything in China. We're, we're all but, for but, importing but, people but, in yeah, Australia. Yeah, we're able to erect them very quickly and, as but, well, South Korea. And yeah, the thing is, like, if, if we don't put something else on the table, we keep going down the same road we are at the moment, Lucy. I mean, you can look at your power bill, I can look at my power bill. It's abundantly clear that, A, we didn't get our $275 off that was promised, though, <laughs> though Bowen now says we're still working on it, we're still working yeah, on it. Yeah, it's still coming. But, but it, it, we're told that renewables are the cheapest form of power. They're not. It's abundantly clear. And, yes, there is a big expense in setting up nuclear energy, but it's technology that can last for 80, 100 years. 20, 30 years' time, you've got to blow up the wind turbines and take them out the back of Queensland. Less than that. If they're not already blowing up on their own, by the way, <laughs> you've seen true. some of the footage across <laughs> social media, but then you've also got to worry about, OK, where are we disposing of these wind turbines? I mean, we talk a lot about, when it comes to nuclear energy, about where we're going to, you know, carefully dispose of that and the issues that, that, that are aligned in that mm. respect. But ultimately, for me, I mean, you look at the top-performing economic countries around the world yeah. who have all endorsed nuclear energy. You've got the USA, for example, who've got 90 reactors who are all very supportive of it. They have bipartisan support, which is very crucial to a success. The biggest concern for me when I look at this, and I'm very supportive of Dutton's uh, announcement as well, by the way, I think it is the way forward. In fact, I think we're a little bit too far behind in this announcement. But, you know, what's going to happen if the Liberals do get this up and then in another term beyond that, we then get a Labor government in power again? Are they just going to dismantle the whole thing? Thing. It'll oh, be like the wall. Be, It'll be like we, Trump's wall. He started it exactly. and then Biden pulls exactly. it down. Exactly. So that's, like that. the, that's the, the Labor problem. Go, the Labor Party doesn't have an argument for two reasons. The first is Lucas Heights. Been there yep. 66 years. No three I grew up no, no three I, 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 I grew up next to the reactor. After I, don't know. I, I, I thought so there was, was something a bit I knew I was setting myself up. I went on school excursions there. They've got nuclear. That's how I became right wing. They've got, <laughs> they've got Lucas Heights, right? So that we know that's what's going on and it's worked safely for 66 years. 
and they're going to put nuclear reactors in submarines with sailors sleeping right alongside them. They haven't got a leg to stand on. The safety, no, the safety, the safety thing clearly is... That, and that's what I'm saying. They should make a sober Chernobyl. economic argument against it, like Peter Malinowskis has done and like Chris Minns has done. And there, you'll notice there's a difference between the Labor left premiers and the ones on the right. <laughs> As but, you um, like to point out. That's right. And, and, and because there is a very significant difference. And again, there's, you know, a sensible Labor right union like the AWU is actually pro-nuclear energy. The question, the question is simply one of economics and it's one of time frames. It's how quickly can they be up, up and running? Can they be up and running in time? to meet our targets in 2050, let alone 2035? And uh, is there... And, and what is the cost-benefit analysis? How much is it going to cost? Now, Why cost wouldn't we build for the six, future, though? Because it, it long-term, it does work better make, and make, economically better. If you, if you can make that argument, if you present the costings... Fine, absolutely. I'm, more, I'm not anti nuclear like in the Dutton slightest. Has, but but Dutton, Dutton has not done that. Dutton just said. Saying, no, no, no. Saying, no, it's Joe, Albanese it's who hasn't done it. They the will not supply their total costings. They won't do it. Miles was on television, breakfast television this week, and he was asked repeatedly what is the total costing of switching completely to renewables? He no, didn't have a number. I'm not, I'm not talking about. No, I'm not talking about costing the entire Australian energy system forever and ever, which can never be done. I'm just saying, cost just one nuclear reactor. Have a blueprint. Have a see. This but is this nuclear it'll, reactor. It'll this is what job. type of reactor it will be. Well, I could say Come the same on. about but renewables. Then we're all back to Dutton's ground. Dutton's yeah, but we're doing renewables. Clear. That's the that's yeah. the difference. We're doing renewables. And they're failing. And each exactly. of and exactly. each of those exactly. projects does have a cost attached to it. It has a, has a you know a megawatt output. Just Dunn hasn't even provided the costings. The time frame of even a single one of these. Yeah, but if you expected him to come out with war and peace and tell you every little bit of what was well, going to yeah. happen on the day. This is a guy. This is a guy who demanded. You know, said there was nowhere near enough detail on the yeah, voice. But, it will, it will, no it'll, it'll but he said it's on its way. He said it's well, coming soon, it's, right? He said this is the I, first. This announcement was the first step as part of a, exactly. a process building up towards the election in 12 months' time. So ultimately, I think yes, I do agree with you, Joe, to an extent. I think it would have helped his cause much more if he was able to initiate right from the announcement, make it abundantly clear what yeah. the costings were going to look like, but he's already admitted it. He yeah. spoke to the Today Show the other day, said it's coming. He's already said it's going to cost a fraction of what the Labor government are proposing oh, sure, in terms fine. of their renewables. So, so, let's see. Let's, let's something see I think here. that we, we also need to discuss and something I think that our country, culturally speaking, has got really long for a long time is we're not planning for our kids and their kids and their mm -hmm. kids. We are too short-term. We're thinking right now, yeah. this is a really big cost now, but yeah. I think that the problem yeah. is, like, and this is a great analogy, we plant the orange trees now and we might, might not be able to enjoy the fruit, but our kids are going to be able to make orange juice from the oranges that grow from those trees. And I think we need to, especially with policy, especially with these energy things, mm -hmm. we need to be thinking more long term. Yeah. How are we going to protect our kids and their kids from Absolutely. having to suffer the, the crisis that we're currently in? And I think that, that if we approached it with that, I think people would be a lot more willing to uh, perhaps foresee differences in cost and expenditure, especially if in long-term, nuclear was going to be better for our yeah, kids. Sure. And the, yeah. la the Labor no, Party aren't even allowing for the debate, though. This is the biggest it's issue that I have. We weren't yeah. allowed to talk about right. nuclear. We can't have a mature and the cost sensible debate discussion is around a it. a bomb that could explode on the Labor Party because the, the real total costs, by the time you put in 28,000 kilometres of transmission lines, mm -hmm. uh, is go go they're talking about... Uh, one calculation I saw today was $1.2 trillion to get uh, to switch Australia to renewables. It's, and, and the maximum for uh, uh, the seven nuclear reactors uh, sites decided so far is about $600 million. The, if they keep pushing this cost thing, Joe, it'll blow up in their face. How do you waste the, the, the money on the, the voice? The, 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 that's the, the $600 billion or whatever you want to call it, or the $16 billion per nuclear reactor. And again, the last one in the UK, their costs are just blown out astronomically, right? So even well, the initial cost... What government project does... That's right. No, I, I, I get that. I understand that. But that is just for the construction of the power plant. The trillion-dollar figure that's bounded about, that is for the entire Australian energy network we for all of time. We don't need a new network. It's existing. It runs to where the no, old coal-fired place... But no, we just plug it in and put it on the... Power. There's not enough capacity in the existing network, Hell. Everybody well,